could they have gone? Oh, oh, what am I going to do? I don't know Hello, what to Rudy. do. Hello, Rudy. Are you okay? You seem upset. Is everything okay? Oh, officer, good guy. I'm so glad you're here. I have a very big problem. I've been robbed. You've been robbed? Yeah. Let me take a report. What was stolen? Oh, well, 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 they took my rubber band and my two paper clips and, and my orange crayon and who knows what else they took. Oh, this is so terrible. Okay, oh. okay, okay. Calm down, Rudy. Are you sure they were stolen? Sometimes we just lose things. Officer, good guy, you don't understand. My rubber band and two paper clips and orange crayon were very, very important to me. I can't believe they're gone. Oh, why, God, oh, why would they be taken? Rudy, oh, Rudy, I do. calm down. Haven't you ever heard the story of Job? He lost everything, but he still stayed faithful to God. Let's go to the story table and ask Miss Donna to share it with us. Okay, let's go. Oh. Well, hello kids, welcome to the story table, and we are going to learn about a story of Job today. And this story is a story of faith, and it's talking about how important it is to trust in God as well. We, there's so much to learn about Job, and, and it comes from the book of Job, which is very long. It's actually 42 chapters. So I thought how difficult this might be to explain it to you in a short period of time, but what I'm gonna do is give you a, a summary of the story, and hopefully that makes you understand what Job was all about. Well, Job, first of all, you know, when you see in this picture, he was a very good man. He was an upright man. He followed God. He was very obedient. He was very blessed. You know, he has beautiful family, has seven boys and three daughters. And it tells you in this story that he had 500 yoke, he had 500 donkeys, he had many servants, he had 3,000 camels and 7,000 sheep. That's a lot of animals, right? And a lot of servants to take care of the animals as well as his family. So he was very blessed and people admired him. But you know what? There's always bad that comes into the world and we have Satan and we know about Satan as a fallen angel of God. And he sees Job and he tries to find fault with him. So he goes to God and he's telling him basically, you know what? He's only honoring you because you bless him so much. And you know, God knows everything, kids. We know that, right? He created us. He created Job. So he knew Job inside and out. So he gives permission to Satan to test him. But he said, you can test him, but you cannot harm him. So he goes on, and what's he going to do? Well, we find out in the story that little by little, all those wonderful blessings of Job are taken away. You know, his, his oxen and his donkeys, they were stolen. We find out that his sheep were all burned up and the servants were killed. And then we find out his camels were, were taken and the, and the servants were killed. And then finally, we find out there was a windstorm. And what happens, the house where his children were all having a feast, it collapses and his children were killed as well. So he lost everything, everything children. Think about it, everything you have in your world could be gone like that. And that's what happened to Job. It was gone within minutes. And you know, what did you think Job did? You know, I'm sure he was very upset and really didn't know what was going on, but he still praised God and he still honored God. He wasn't happy, but he still gave God praise. And you know, Job at this point, you know, we find out that he tore his clothes, and he shaved his head, and he fell on the ground, but he worshiped God nonetheless. Everything was taken away from him. And Satan saw this and he went to God and he said, you know, he's still praising you, but I know that if you can allow me to do harm to his health, that he would curse you. And God said, well, I'll allow you to cause him physical health issues, but you could not kill him. So again, Satan went to work with him. And what did he do this time? Well, we find out in the story that he ends up causing sores to go all over Job's body. We see this picture and you can see he's really injured. He has sores to the point where they're itching and they're painful. And we even find out he takes broken pottery and he starts to scratch at his body because he's in such pain. And what happens? He still honors God. He still praises God. And what does his wife say to him? 
She says, you're still honoring God? You should curse God and die. And he doesn't. He still praises God. I'm sure he's upset. I'm sure he's hurting. But he still obeys God and he's very obedient. So then what do we find out? We find out that Job's friends, three of his friends come to him and they're going to try to, what we thought was comfort him. Okay, they're going to talk to him. You know, and what we see in this story is that, you know, these friends, maybe they have good intentions of comforting Job, but what ends up happening is they start to kind of criticize him. They start to tell him that he must have sinned for this to happen, to have everything taken away you had to have done something wrong. See, you know, boys and girls, a lot of times, you know, when we see bad things happen, we automatically think someone must have done something wrong. But that's not the case. And sometimes the best thing that we could do for someone when they're going through challenges and trials in life is just to stop and be there for them and to listen to them. You know, and just show them the love of God. Just show love to them. Because that is so helpful to everyone going through situations. So this continues on. And you know, Job at one point, he feels that he probably shouldn't even been born. You know, he's feeling that everything's been taken away from him. You know, his children, his property, his wealth. You know, his wife is telling him to curse God. His friends are pretty much telling him that, you know, he had to have done something wrong. And he's trying to defend himself. And, he, and he's thinking, should I defend myself to God? And then God speaks to him and he realizes that you know, God is in control of everything, of everyone. And He, he controls the, the heavens and the stars, sun and us. And He knows what's going to go on in our lives. And Job realizes this and he realizes this, it's not for us to question why things happen to us in our lives. Yeah, we're not happy sometimes when we go through trials, but it's not for us to question God and why He does things. Because God is bigger than us, and He has reasons far greater than we will ever understand. And see, God sees this. So God, God realizes that Job is sorry for what he's saying. And what ends up happening? He ends up returning to Job everything that he lost. But not only does he return to him everything he lost, like he does have 10 more children, but all of his animals, everything that was taken away from him, has now been doubled. And children, you know, you think of that. Remember how many animals he had? So he had 500 yoke, so now he has 1,000. 500 donkeys, now he has 1,000. 3,000 camels, he has 6,000. And 7,000 sheep, he has 14,000 sheep. He's so blessed. And all the sores on his body, he was healed. And so we end up finding out that Job was actually more blessed in his later part of his life than he was in his earlier part of his life. But he remained faithful to God because God was faithful to him. And he lived to be 140 years old. So we too must trust in God when we're going through things, all right? We don't know why, but God always has a plan. And I just hope that that makes it a little bit more understandable, the story of Job. And I hope that we can understand that when we go through trials in life, not to try to find faults with God or try to understand why it's happening, but to realize that God is in control of everything and there's a plan for everyone and everything. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to check back with Rudy and Officer Good Guy. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we could be here today and just learn a little bit more about Job. And also to help us understand that in life, sometimes we're going to go through trials and we're going to lose people and we're going to lose things that we hold so dear to our heart. But it's not for us to question why. We know God is in charge and God is there and we just need to trust in God and be faithful to know God has a plan for each and every one of us. We love you, dear Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. And we ask all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hi, guys. What did you think of the story of Job? I liked it very much, Miss Donna. It's a great book in the Bible. Yeah. You know, I never read it before. I thought it said job. And since I wasn't looking for one, I just totally ignored that book. 
Well, Rudy, it's spelled the same, but it's pronounced Job. Rudy, I hope you feel better about losing your stuff. After all, when you see what Job lost, well, what you lost doesn't seem so bad. True? True! But you know what, Officer Good Guy? Maybe, you know what, don't file that report, okay? Oh, okay, Rudy. You're no longer upset about missing your things? Well, no, that's not it. It's because they're not missing. I found them. What? what? Where, Where were, were they? they? In my other pocket. Oh, goodness, Rudy. Say goodbye to the kids. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, Bye kids. kids. Bye. Bye.